Hey guys, welcome back to another intermittent technology video. I thought it was about time for an update video about 4K or 8 megapixel IP cameras. This time around, I haven't tested a lot of different brands, but instead I bought some newer Dahua models that on paper have interesting specifications and might dethrone my current favorite camera, the Dahua HDW5831R. That's this one. So let's start with taking a better look at those newer models and see if they are better than the current champion. If you follow my channel, you'll probably have seen me tease my testing setup in a few videos already. I wanted to do a thorough comparison and thus wanted to use the cameras in a few different locations and situations. These newer models I selected are, well, this one and this one. Specifically, this is the HFW5831TZS, which is a 8 megapixel 4K very focal lens model. And then I thought I should also buy the cheaper model. So this is the HFW1831E that has the same sensor, but has a fixed 2.8 millimeter lens instead of the Vera focal lens. Now these cameras are from a different line from the Hua called their H265 Lite series. Sadly, they aren't available in my favorite eyeball model like this one, but I wanted to test them anyway, because in the end, the housing, well, it's just that. And the internals and lens and stuff like that is most important to image quality they deliver. So, let's first take a look at the paper specifications and compare that with my favorite model of last year. If you haven't seen my video about this camera, I'll link it uh, up there and also in the description and you can check that out later. It was a great comparison video, so I highly advise you to do so. As always, I will have all the models listed down in the description below, including some affiliate links. If you like this video and want to help me in the channel out and do more of these videos, please use those links. You don't have to, no obligations whatsoever, but if you do, that's greatly appreciated. So let's start with the biggest reason I wanted to test these cameras, and that is the sensor size. As we can see here in the data sheet, the sensor used in these new models is a lot bigger. The new cameras have a 1 1 8 inch sensor, while the previous models had a 1 2 5th inch sensor. In theory, that should mean that each individual pixel on the sensor is bigger and thus can receive more light. If that also automatically translates into a better resulting picture, depends on the quality of that pixel. But that's what we're going to see in the demo footage later on. Next to the bigger sensor, the other advantage that these new cameras have that instead of recording at 4K 15 FPS, like this one, is that they can deliver 4K 30 FPS, making for a much smoother motion in, in the picture, or in the video, or whatever you want to call it. Although in general, 15 frames per second is considered more than enough for security purposes, there are some purposes thinkable where a higher frame rate might be desirable. Other specifications are pretty comparable, meaning lens angle and other capabilities. The reason I got two models is what I said before. This one has a fixed lens and it's quite small. And this one has a very focal lens. Now, what I noticed in my previous testing is that the models that had a very focal lens delivered a much sharper image than the fixed focus models. So I bought both to see if that was the case again. For people wondering, this model is about $160, $170. And this model can be had for around $100. So that is a big price difference. Well, after that, I guess we should dive right into what most people want to see. And that is the demo footage. Specifications are nice, but in the end, the only thing that really matters is the resulting picture quality. Now, I want to be clear up front. The next part will be filled with my personal opinions on the images and results. Image quality is, in my opinion, always subjective. But before people get offended, yes, these are my opinions on these cameras. I'm showing you the original unedited footage, so you have an 
If you have a different opinion, that's perfectly fine. That's why I'm showing you the images and I'm giving you my opinion, but you don't have to follow that. Oh, I will not be offering the original footage as a download. I'm using some special techniques that make the quality loss from YouTube's compression and stuff like that as low as possible. So what you're looking at is pretty close to original quality coming out of the camera directly. All shots were recorded with the cameras set to 10 megabits in H.265. In theory, that could give the 15 frames per second camera an advantage in recording quality, but I wouldn't run either of these cameras with that high bitrate normally anyway, so for comparison's sake, that's fine. Again, in my opinion. To test these cameras, I have selected four different scenarios and will look at each during a light and during a dark period. Each time I will try to keep the order in the old camera first, from last year, old, and then I will add the fixed lens footage, and then I will add the varifocal lens footage. But the camera that is being used will always be displayed in the top right corner. And uh, uh, that's over there, yes. So, let's get to the demo footage. The first scenario is an indoor one, and that is in my office. So, let's take a look. The demo footage you just, just saw was all recorded in auto settings. My opinion of these shots is that the 30 frames per second is certainly noticeable, but that the old favorite camera seems to provide a bit more sharpness that is mostly noticeable on the sides, for instance where my Quinn LED PCBs are located in this shot. The fixed lens seems to make a horrible mess of this, and well that downgrades image quality a lot. Okay, let's move on. The next testing scenario is indoors also, and that's here, well, here in my garage. At that point, I made a single wooden board, which I put the two testing cameras on, and the older model was right next to the side of it. For this test, I've set the camera to manual mode and set it to the lowest shutter speed equivalent to the frame rate with a max gain of 50%. That means that for the older model, that's 66.6 millisecond, and for the newer models, that's 33.3 millisecond, since they have twice the frame rate. That means that the newer models get a bit darker. Setting them to the same 66.6 milliseconds as the older model brightens this up, but surprisingly not to the same level as the older camera. But since this makes the higher frame rate, which is a feature, I decided to do all tests with the lower 33.3 millisecond, so you can enable the 30 FPS.
Here we kind of see the same again. The 30 frames per second is very noticeable, but the old favorite camera seems to produce a better image quality, at least to me. Also interesting to see is what I highlighted above. If you compare the newer camera with the varifocal lens and the older camera with the same settings, you see that the older camera is actually producing a brighter image than the new one. I played around with this a little bit and changing the frame rate and shutter speeds to match, but the old favorite was still able to produce a brighter image. So although the newer cameras have a much bigger sensor, currently I don't see them as much better in low light situations. I also tested with no IR light and see what happened then. But again, the old model with the smaller sensor was able to produce a brighter image. The only advantage the, the new models show is that their noise pattern is a bit better. That might also be because of the 30 frames per second, but the image isn't brighter what you might have expected from a bigger sensor. To the third scenario, we're back in my garden. I basically just nailed the board to the wall next to the camera that was already hanging there and I used a 1 PoE in, 4 PoE output switch so they could all run over the same cable. If you haven't seen my video about running multiple IP cameras over the same cable, check out my video well, about that subject. You'll probably find it there and also in the description. Here in the garden we'll also have some moving subjects in the form of chickens. Chickens are always good, except at night, then they're sleeping, so yeah. So let's first look at some daytime footage.
Here you can clearly see the different image angles of all the cameras. The fixed focus from the new camera model had the least wide view, while the varifocal version had the widest view. Oddly enough, in height, they were all pretty comparable, which I didn't expect since the new varifocal models show a much wider image, but the sensor dimensions are the same 16x9. Again, sharpness of the old favorite model impresses here and shows a much clearer 4K image than the new model seems to produce. I tried refocusing even manually and playing with other settings, but it just doesn't seem to be able to match the same image quality, at least in regards to sharpness. These shots were all again taken with the manual setting mode equivalent to their frame rate, so 33 milliseconds and 66.6 milliseconds. For me, it's immediately apparent that the old favorite camera manages to produce a much brighter image. Smearing and noise, however, seem to be a bit better on the new camera, but I would have expected a much bigger difference between the older and the new models, since the new models have that much bigger sensor. To the last test scenario, and that is again at our large indoor LAN party. Although it's indoor, there's basically only one scenario here, and that's pretty dark. Again, 30 FPS is really nice and immediately noticeable, but the old favorite model seems to produce a lot sharper and an image with nicer colors, at least in my opinion. And well, that kind of brings me to the conclusion. Should you buy these new cameras with bigger sensors that offer 30 frames per second over the old favorite with only 15 frames per second? Well, even after using these cameras for a few months now, that's actually a really tough question to answer. To be honest, it all depends on the situation. I think my answer in general for security purposes would be no. 
the older model offers a much nicer form factor. Well, at least I think so. Has a microphone on board, and in my opinion, also has a higher image quality in regards to sharpness and even night visibility. Although the new models have a much larger sensor and should receive more light, the sensitivity and other qualities of the sensor seem to be less than the older sensor used in the HDW5831. Of course, partly that is because it wants to show 30 frames per second instead of 15 frames per second, but even when compensating that difference, setting it to 15 frames per second and exactly the same settings, the older favorite model still produces a better, much sharper quality and even a brighter image in my opinion. I'm guessing this is also why the older model is still part of Dahua's Pro line, while the new models are positioned in their light camera line. As I mentioned in the beginning, the light cameras have come down in price, and this uh, fixed focus model is available for around $100, while the Vera focal model will cost you about $160. The old favorite, the 5831R, still remains around $200, so the light models are a bit cheaper. But again, with that said, this is my opinion. If you value frame rate above all else, these new models aren't bad cameras and haven't had any issues using them. They've been stable and they've worked well outdoor, in the sun, in the rain, no problems. In positive sides, in positive sides, for instance, their web interface felt a lot snappier than it does on the older models, which is probably due to a new CPU, but that's a definite plus. The new Vari Focal model actually changed my opinion about using these style of mounts, because it has multiple pivot points in the mounting bracket, with which you can always position it the way you need to. The fixed lens model, however, basically has a single screw and a ball joint, and that means, means you can either move it left or right or up and down, and I really hate these models. That's why I like the eyeball model so much. You can basically mount it against the wall, mount it against the ceiling. It doesn't really matter. You can always make it look the right way with the correct horizon, but this mount, uh, I really hate these. Uh, I can't, I don't recommend that. It's cheap, but it's really a bitch to align. But this one really surprised me because you can turn the foot, you can uh, bend it here, and then you can also turn the camera. So even if you wanted to do it like this and bend it so that it still looks straight, you can do that. So this mount, I'm okay with this mount. It's okay. It's, it's second to the eyeball model, but this works. So yeah. And the new models have some advantages. As I said, the 30 frames per second is nice if you can use it. Recently, I did a live stream and I made a video where I used the, the Veri Focal model mounted on a piece of wood above my table and I used it to film my PCB soldering. Basically made it my PCB soldering camera. And since it can focus up close pretty well, I actually shot my Quinn LED Dig Uno soldering tutorial fully on that IP camera. I'll have that video linked in the description below if you want to take a look at the original footage. It's zoomed in, but that is the original quality that's coming out of the camera, and it did a really good job at that. So it's not that I don't recommend these cameras, they're pretty good. I just think that the old model offers a better image quality for most situations for about the same price. So unless you need 30 frames per second or certain other features, my advice would be to still get the HDW5831R over the newer light camera models. If however you like the form factor, the 30 frames per second, or the newer platform, these guys certainly aren't bad and I can recommend them. I hate this mounting bracket, but other than that, they're pretty good. So again, if you would like to buy one of these cameras and this video helped you, consider using my affiliate links in the description. I'll make it so you can choose between Amazon and AliExpress, and I'll link to the shops with which I personally have had a good experience, and most often also have the cheapest price. And if you're willing to use those links, thank you very much. And well, that's it really for this video. If you have any questions regarding the cameras, please let me know down in the comments. I always love discussing the images and stuff that comes related to that. 
we also have a Discord server, and if you would like to discuss a bit longer, or you like most of my topics on my channel, come hang out with us there. So, I know these videos are pretty long to get through, but thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys back in the next video. Bye-bye.